वन क्यूएसटी बार देश का भरोसा मॉर्फिन रिलायंस इंडस्ट्रीज लिमिटेड एजुकेशन पार्टनर चंडीगढ़ यूनिवर्सिटी न्यूट्रिशन पार्टनर उत्तम घी स्पेशल पार्टनर देशभगत यूनिवर्सिटी बोपराय इलेक्ट्रिकल्स ज्वेलरी पार्टनर श्याम ज्वेलर्स डिजिटल लर्निंग पार्टनर टी सी वाई लर्निंग एग्री इनोवेशन पार्टनर जी एस ए इंडस्ट्रीज एग्री जोन एसोसिएट पार्टनर फ्रंटेरा इमिग्रेशन दिस इवनिंग द डिस्कशन विल फोकस ऑन री थिंकिंग लग्जरी एंड रिवाइविंग ट्रेडिशन इन अ न्यू लुक वी हैव हियर विद अस रॉयल्स हु आर डिफाइनिंग रॉयल्टी बाई एंगेजिंग विद द ट्रेडिशन एंड हिस्ट्री इन अ न्यू वे डिजाइनर्स हु आर कंजर्विंग ट्रेडिशन थ्रू इंटीरियर डिजाइनिंग fashionistas and screen artists who are making choices that count so let us begin this evening with an audio visual in the radiant glow of success and under the banner of news 18 punjab the aspiration unfolds as an extraordinary event for its second season promising an experience that transcends the ordinary as the sun sets immerse yourself in a realm where dreams are not just dreamt but realized where every individual story contributes to the vibrant mosaic of the human experience step into a world where the stars align not only in the night sky but on this stage where artists visionaries and trailblazers along with esteemed figures from royal families converge from the glitzy glamour of the silver screen to the soul stirring melodies of the music world I now request to editor News 18 India and News 18 Punjab Haryana Jyoti Kamal to welcome our panelists for the first session Rethinking Luxury. Janita Doda, actor and fashion designer. Siddharth Daspa, designer and founder of Daspa House Jodhpur. Born in Chandigarh, actress Janita Doda made a name for herself in Punjabi, Hindi as well as Tamil cinema. She is the co-founder of Chandigarh Fashion Week through which she is promoting talent accessibility and the rich heritage of India. Thakur Sardar Singh of Daspa is a designer and the founder of beautiful Daspa House. It is a century old family home in Jodhpur which he has converted into a getaway. So let us begin with the first session rethinking luxury. Over to you Jyoti Kamal. Thank you so much Arshi. So we started off this whole aspiration uh, last year in fact and uh, this is the second time that we are doing it in Chandigarh. We did another uh, session in Udaipur. So the idea is that we talk about as India is progressing as things are moving forward as people are kind of wanting the finer things in life. We talk about luxury, we talk about experiences, we talk about uh, very kind of discerning kind of things that people have started expecting. But along with it we pause and kind of take a look back because you are people who have lived it who have seen it all that when you started off what was your perception of this whole thing and as you now look back at it what is your perception now and as insiders how do you kind of really look upon all of this so the idea is that we kind of explore this whole field and we try and figure out how things are in terms of aspiration how things are in terms of india moving forward how things are in terms of reality how things are in terms of fantasy and then how all of this actually leads to ambition which drives a lot of people forward So Jonita starting off with you you're born in Chandigarh you have acted in movies you have kind of done Saman 3D which was like a 3D movie which was a romantic movie one normally doesn't associate a 3D movie with things popping out of it to be a romantic movie yeah. yeah you would rather expect it to be an action movie or you would rather expect things to be kind of really flying out of the screen <laughs> so what was that about why did you choose to do that and what was that whole concept about and how did that whole thought process happen and why did you choose that you know so first of all thank you for having me and uh, you know putting up this great initiative you know uh, we are living in a world which is you know in a continuous process of flux you know 
so you know, to talk about aspirations, luxury, and all is like really imperative. Uh, about Salman 3D, it's like, you know, I have always, you know, so again, I think it's about aspiration. I was, you know, uh, while growing up, I always wanted to be part of something that's India's first, you know, so I thought I was kind of manifesting that, you know, I, I should be in something which they would say, Jonathan Dora in India's first, blah, blah. <laughs> and uh, when Salman happened, uh, so it was the first time that, you know, they were making a love story, you know, a drama in 3D, because as you said, we only see, you know, the action thrillers and we have seen, you know, the avatars and all of that. So yeah, it was like uh, interesting to do that and, uh, you know, to shoot normal emotions when you have to be technically a little more, you know, perfect about and, you know, take care of the angles of because it's a 3D thing. So how, you know, to get the impact in the 3D vision. So it, it is more than just acting, you know, but you have to also take care of the technicality. So I think, yeah, that was that what inspired me to take on Salman. Yeah, like, but you were just talking about the fact that it's a different platform in that sense when you do a 3D movie. Yeah. So what's different about it? Like, it, you, you were just pointing out a little bit that it's about the angles, it's about a little bit more, but like, what's different? Do you act normally? Is it just about the cameras? Or do you also have to worry about how you are kind of really working for those cameras? No, so, no. So technically it is like, yeah, technically it is different because the cameras are different. They're not the normal cameras. They are 3D cameras. So, and for you as an actor, basically you are just acting, but then even if you have to go back and like, you know, check your shot at a monitor, so you just can't like go and see. You need to have your 3D glasses. Otherwise you can't see what's happening, right? So that is like a basic difference. And uh, as an actor, what adds up to the difference of shooting, for example, like, if like, you know, I'm just doing something where I just do this. So I will have to make sure that, you know, the, you know, whatever is in my hand, the object should fly in that particular direction because only then in a 3D, it will have that impact for the audience. You know, they're going to feel it's coming right on them. So yeah, then that is an added thing as an actor. Otherwise it's normally acting like how you would do in a normal camera, a normal film. Yeah. So Jonita, you come from a business family. That's and right. uh, so what was it that really triggered you that this is the domain that you want to get into. What stage, at what point did you decide, okay, this is what I want, this is how I want my life to pan out? Uh, when does that happen? Does it happen like <laughs> in pre-teenage years? Does it happen during your teenage years? When does it happen in college? Yeah, actually, how did you really define it? I think I kind of never planned that I'm going to be an actor. I, I always say that, you know, I'm an actor by default. Possibly God wanted, okay, she should be an actor. Um, I was still in school when, you know, there were these ads, you know, they were making this ad for some Hollywood uh, product. I mean, Hollywood um, production house. And, uh, you know, they offered me that. And I was like, Oh, okay. I mean, at that time, I had absolutely no idea that I want to act. And it was like a pricey little princess. Okay, all right, I should try. <laughs> and that's how it began. And uh, then it's absolutely, you know, the love for cinema that grew. And I knew that, okay, I want to be an actor. But um, so for me, you know, it started, then it, there was a break and I got back to my studies because I really believe that education is very important. It's vital. Um, and uh, then again, yes, then I was like, okay, I, this is something that I would, to tell stories, you know, uh, would be something really beautiful. Yeah. You're from Chandigarh, but you have always found the southern movie scene very exciting. Yeah, and you, um, you even kind of um, really like, say, Mamuti or Mohanlal, the Malayali <laughs> actors. Yeah. So what's it that kind of really fascinates you about the southern film industry? And how do you kind of discriminate between... Uh, uh, distinguished rather between their working style and the working style that you see here. Did you find any noticeable difference in how the southern film industry works? Yeah, you know, so I think the southern industry is way more professional. I mean, we are definitely getting there. Though, I mean, I made my Punjabi debut opposite the legend Gurdas Man, you know, so... So like, you know, I have my fair share here as well, but uh, Southern industry is definitely way, way more professional. And, you know, it's like, if you would know that, you know, you will remember even the Hindi Bollywood movies initially, they used to have their entire post-production work happening in, you know, Madras, when it was Madras, because they were technically way ahead of us. I mean, I'm talking Bollywood, Punjab, like, you know, we kind of grew in the last 10 years is like, you know, when the Punjab industry is like really come up and is doing well for itself. Uh, but yeah, I think that was uh, another thing that, you know, kind of attracts me to South cinema is the way they tell their stories. I mean, they are open to innovation. They are open to different concepts, you know. Uh, they were not stuck to, or like, they're not sticking to like just one thing. They are open to experimenting. And 
And one another thing that I really like about them is that the people, the audiences, they are very loyal to their, you know, uh, movies. And I think that plays a major role. That is something that gives the producers the liberty, you know, the makers that liberty to, you know, try and do something, you know, new, to try some, you know, innovative scripts, you know. Uh, because they know that their audience are going to like kind of, you know, uh, you know, they'll have the back and, you know, they'll come, they'll watch the movies, which kind of lacks here. And I just uh, hope and I, uh, you know, I always tell the audiences, like, you know, if you want your children to come up, you know, if you want to see more stars, you know, from uh, amongst yourselves, you know, you have to start watching your cinema. You've got to, like, start supporting your cinema. That's like, you know, when the makers will have that, um, you know, thing to bring in new people, bring in new subjects, and uh, yeah, help everyone. Fantastic. In fact, we have Shabnam ji, the Yuvraj Singh's mother also joining us. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll just go to uh, Siddharth. Uh, I'll come back to you for the Chandigarh Fashion Week. That's an initiative that you started. But Siddharth Daspan, uh, just to talk about the fact that you have created a very eclectic experience in Jodhpur. Um, you, you are from Mayo, and then another classmate of yours also from Mayo. You went and studied in Milan, Italy, and then you decided to come back and have this very eclectic experience that you would set up. One normally sets up a restaurant, or one kind of gets into music, or one gets into art, or one gets into curation. But when you kind of put it all together, you have Daspa House. So where you get everything. So which is basically that if you have to kind of have a meal, then that whole kind of feel has to be an experience. It's not just about the meal, it's about that whole ambience, it's about the music, it's about the curation, it is about the meal also. Why did you think of this concept and what is the kind of audience that you're catering for and where did you sense that there could be a demand for something like this? Right, so um, I think design, I'm, tra I'm a trained designer, so I think design has a big role to play in it. Um, when I shifted back to Jodhpur, we were renovating the house and we didn't want to kind of run a you know very conventional hotel so the whole idea was to have a space wherein design meets hospitality in all forms so being it could be uniforms it could be curating tables and at the same time giving a platform to your regular art culture around the state or the country but in the real sense which is relevant today so giving it a more interactive a more uh, like a more profound way of understanding what the artists are doing and in terms of uh, you know having uh, the right mix of art and when i say art it could be art in all forms it could be cinema we do we showcase like documentaries it could be bar takeovers so you have uh, different bartenders coming on board at the cocktail bar and uh, making some amazing cocktails there are, there is of course music that's something which uh, I personally really enjoy. So, so most of the things which happen in the house is, is what we enjoy doing. And that's what kind of translates to a, to a better show which you can kind of uh, put together. And also to kind of uh, make things a little exciting for your team essentially. Because obviously with like your regular operations in a hotel, I'm sure people get bored, right? So it's just exciting for the team to kind of see exciting things happening uh, every month and it's the back of house, maybe your kitchen team comes in front and kind of sees what's happening. So sometimes small things like those keeps like a, the team energetic and it's just exciting for everybody to work in a, you know, like an innovative, friendly environment. But it's a lot of hard work. I mean, you could set up a restaurant and you know that here is my set menu and this is how I'm going to play it out. Here is the interior designer who's done it all up and that's about it. Thereafter, it's just going into a repetitive mode in terms of the meals that you serve. But in your case, you have to continuously innovate because it's continuously got to be an experience. So you've got to keep kind of rejigging, rethinking, redoing, renovating. So isn't this like strenuous? And do you think there is going to be a phase where there's going to be a burnout? That, okay, I've had enough with this. Let me go back to a regular restaurant and kind of have a set menu. And that's about it. I so, think so. How difficult is it? Or do you enjoy the process? No, I, I think it's the other way around. I mean, if I'm doing the same thing every day, I'll get burned out. So you'd rather kind of do something yeah. exciting which would, uh, you know, keep you going. And uh, just stuff like having uh, your, your, your team or your guests kind of come in and have an experience which is, which is very immersive to kind of, because like we were talking before, like you were saying before, like luxury, the definition I think changes every, every day. What people expect 
I mean, it's got nothing to do with wealth. I think it is first-hand experience of uh, maybe going to a, catching a bus and going to a place back and beyond in Jaisalmer and spending a night under the stars. So it's basic stuff like that which can kind of be called luxury and it's for that individual to go back home or wherever that individual is from and try, tell that story to friends, family. That's what I think luxury is for me. So, but what is the kind of uh, clientele that you see there? Because you've started this concept called Soapbox also, yeah. which is uh, where you kind of experiment with different kinds of music also and uh, people who are kind of invited to come and perform there. So you kind of tried a jazz experiment there. So how did all of that pan out and what is the kind of kind of clientele that you're catering to. And especially when you look at Jodhpur, is it the people coming from abroad? And now that you have set this up, are you looking to taking this out from Jodhpur or is that way you're going to keep it? Our audience typically would be, uh, I mean, I don't want to put my audience in a box for sure. So somebody, I'm sure like curious travelers, yes. Somebody who is uh, creative and appreciates all forms of art for sure. And uh, Taking this entire idea away from Jodhpur and kind of doing a newer project is in, 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 in the pipeline. So we're kind of looking at something in Goa, we're looking at something in Rajasthan. So it'll be like a similar uh, project, but obviously you stay true to, I mean, if you're doing something in Goa, so it'll, be, it'll be true to the roots of Goa and not kind of replicate Rajasthan to a Goa. Right. Right. Jonita, in fact, coming back to you. Uh, India is changing, Punjab is changing, Chandigarh is changing. You see all these new malls coming up. The whole airport road is coming alive with, I don't know how many malls are opening up. Yeah. So there are, there was once upon a time when Elante Mall had opened up and there was this whole feel that uh, it's going to be swamped by people coming from rural Punjab and then it's not going to be an experience. Mm -hmm. But even then, at least I used to kind of discuss with my friends that as people come in and when they see what's going on, they'll get exposed to it. They'll take some of those thoughts back with them. Yeah. Something will change there. They'll come back again, see something, go back. That's how development happens. Yeah. You can't have development happen on its own. Yeah. It will happen in pockets and then it will have ripple effects and it'll spread across. Sure. So that's how things move. And now you see that people are changing the way they're dressing up, yeah. the way they kind of look, the way they want yeah. to kind of see things. Yeah. You see people, uh, kind of, you see men buying colored pants, which earlier didn't used to really happen. It used yes. to be generally grays and blues and blacks, yeah. but things are changing. Mm -hmm. So when you see all of that, and when you see your kind of initiative, which is Chandigarh Fashion Week, yes. what is it that you're trying to do there? What is the bridge that you're trying to create there? Um, you know, so with Chandigarh Fashion Week, like, you know, as you said, I am from Chandigarh, right? Uh, and, but I live in Mumbai. I love the city and, uh, you know, there's a vibe, you know, we, the Chandigarhians, like, you know, we really know the vibe that the city holds. And I think, you know, there's so much that the city has to offer and it's not just Chandigarh in itself, because, you know, when I say Chandigarh, I, I feel Himachal, Punjab, Haryana, you know, Punjab, they're, they're all connected. You know, everyone's like, you know, they're in Chandigarh. So, you know, the idea for Chandigarh Fashion Week was to have a platform, you know, where, you know, which is open to innovation, which is way more inclusive, you know, and a place where, you know, talents, talent is nurtured and gets a chance to flourish. You know, it's like, you know, we of course have the best of the designers coming in, the best of the models, the supermodels, the top show directors coming. And then, you know, have a platform where the artisans, the handicraft industry, and, you know, people who possibly do not have those resources, but they have the great, amazing talent, uh, you know, they can come in. And how we are different from like the other fashion week is that, you know, we are an e-commerce platform. So it just doesn't end with one event, like, you know, so for anyone, for the artisans, for the handicraft industry, the people, you know, it is, it is like a year round thing. So once it starts, it's there, you know, so we can, you know, we, it, it's like a way to go global. And I, I feel, you know, um, it, it, these are the times, you know, when we need to aspire and grow together. It's not just about me, myself, it's about us. You know, I mean, it has to be about my happiness, but how my happiness can also add some smiles to the world. That's what I believe in. I think that's where the idea of Chandigarh Fashion Week came between me and my brother. And uh, yeah, taking it forward. Yeah, in fact, uh, when you talk about uh, the different lines, like one has to wrap one's mind around these words, also like something like haute couture, mm -hmm. which is essentially made to order, something that you kind of really, yeah. which, is, which is supposed to be high fashion, which is made to order, which is how things were in India all, around, all along. It yes. was everything was made to order. Then came the Prada Porte kind of lines where it's ready to wear. 
So now, again, things are going back to auth culture once again, kind of really kind of taking a step up. So how do you kind of switch back and forth between these two ways? And how do you kind of decide that what's going to work where? Um, I don't know. I think, you know, I have always believed kind of, you know, that um, I always wanted to do what I want to do at that point of a time, right? So it's it's more about, uh, you know, again, it's it's a very personal choice. It's about like, you know, what I feel like, you know, what brings happiness to me at that point of time. So but there has to be like a blend of, you know, a perfect blend between the luxury, between what you aspire to, your dreams, and how your dreams are going to actually transform in, you know, today's scenario. You know, we are in a world which is like so ever evolving, you know, every day there's something new. And we are living in times that is like so social media driven. Like, I, you know, I'm a little drifting from the topic, I would tell you, like, you know, right now, I've also made a documentary, uh, which is on, um, you know, the natural disasters and, you know, the environment and all. Uh, so, which is absolutely totally different from my being, me being an actor, director and, you know, fashion. Uh, and like someone asked why, or I mean, how can, Jonathan, you think of, you know, you know, something as thing as a disaster? Uh, so I was like, because, you know, we, all of us, you know, we really need to know what is happening around us. You know, it is, it's, these are the times when we really need to be much more aware about our surroundings. And, you know, we really have to give back to, you know, what we are doing around. Uh, so, yeah, so I've started working on that as well. <laughs> so. Fantastic. I think it's just that the number of opportunities have increased. There's a space for everything now. There's you, definitely. You had, you had kind of absolute made to order happening, which is still happening all across yes. Punjab. You go to smaller towns, it's yes. all made to order. Yes. And then you have the ready to wear, the Zara's and everything mm -hmm. as you come to the malls. And then as you kind of step up, you again get into made to order, but then that's a different order altogether. See, people so, love customization now. Yeah. You know, it, it is always a feel good feeling, you know, when you have that extra touch of like, even, yeah. you know, when he's saying, you know, when you do that, you know, something extra, you know, uh, you, yeah. you definitely love that. Yeah. So that. And yeah. like you were saying, there is all extravagance and then we want to give back to society. Yeah. So I think it's just that opportunities are opening up for a lot yeah. many things happening. And I think that's a sign of progress. Yes. Yeah. But uh, Siddharth, coming back to you for a quick question. Uh, you have also kind of now del delved into another experience in your eclectic mix, which is that you find people who do absolute traditional cooking or could be from some family uh, kind of uh, cooking style and you get them to come and then they cook their style of cooking. And then it's an experience for the people who are dining in. And then they also hear the stories of how that particular food was cooked, why it was cooked that way. So it's, it's a very different take again, moving away from standardization to very specialized customization and that also variable all the time, which is a different experience altogether. So again, how did you think about it? And then is it all based on reference because it has to be some sort of a quality control because it has to be somebody telling you that, okay, try this out or you would do something and how would you in innovate? So again, what was the thought behind that? Why don't we see more of this happening all around? So it's like the short story to this is getting something which is made at home right in a commercial kitchen is really difficult, firstly. So you need to kind of understand if you're cooking for 10 people in a commercial kitchen, it's always going to be difficult. So the whole idea is to make this experience more exciting. So you would rather do like a chula outside and have uh, whoever is kind of coming to cook for you to have him cook out him or her cook for the guests right there. So this is one of those things you learn on the go. So if you're kind of looking for a real jungly mask, for example, you won't find the authentic one in a hotel. You'll find a similar tasting uh, recipe, but like the real stuff is, which is made in, in, in homes in Rajasthan or around the country. Similarly, what, you, what we also do is we, we don't have a spa in the hotel, right? So if there is like a demand that somebody wanted to kind of get a spa, so there used to be this barber who used to kind of uh, stay or used to come for our haircuts and give, used to give us a chumpy. So a chumpy is something we kind of included in an experience for our guests. So that's something so unusual for somebody who's coming from elsewhere, getting a chumpy with a navratan tail and that entire vibrator thing happening in his head, they kind of lose their plot. So it's, it's things like those which are small, but uh, that's what makes the difference. Yeah, it's just thinking and uh, taking it by the day and just thinking a little out of the box it's it doesn't have to be something very 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 uh, uh you know it, it's not rocket science yeah yeah i mean you almost have a business model there it's something like a homestay and then home cooked food you kind of get that but then this is about 
real kind of a culinary experience that a household offers which can almost kind of be something that could really take off because there was once this old talk that people would get invited to somebody's house you kind of buy a lunch at somebody's house you kind of go and then eat what is cooked there you kind of get to meet the family and you kind of get to savor whatever is happening let's see how that takes off so but i think you're kind of sowing the seeds there so thank you so much sadar thank you so much uh, jonita for uh, being a part of this the idea was that we kind of explore the wide variety of things that people like you who are kind of blazing trails are doing and that we kind of see more of that happening thank you so much for participating so in news 18's la aspiration thank you so much thank you thank you, thank you jonita thank you siddharth thank you jyoti kamal please stay on the stage i'll now request uh, editor news 18 in india and news 18 punjab haryana jyoti kamal to felicitate our panelists jonita doda सिद्धार्थ सिंह लग्जरी मीन्स डिफरेंट थिंग्स टू डिफरेंट पीपल एंड इट इज अबाउट क्रिएटिंग एक्सपीरियंसेस which people will cherish Siddharth Singh Thank you Jonita thank you Siddharth Jyoti Kamal ji please stay on the stage and with this we'll now move on to our next session